Elon Musk's fallout continues. More companies have paused spending on Musk's social media platform, X, formerly known as Twitter. Joining us right now to talk about it, former SEC chairman Jay Clayton. He's also a CNBC contributor. Jay, uh, we've now watched this exodus uh, take place. There's also uh, a lawsuit uh, that may get filed as early as today uh, that Elon Musk uh, has described uh, as uh, going against uh, Media Matters, which put out this, this report. What, what, what's your initial reaction to all of it? Andrew, my, my initial reaction is we, we as a country, we as a society, are struggling with the marketplace for ideas. The marketplace for ideas is a uniquely American experiment. It's one that has worked incredibly well. But right now, with technology, platforms, and even AI that we've been talking about, it's under stress. We, we see what happened with Musk and the pulling of advertising. We've seen what's happened on college campuses. And let's not forget, we have a case going through the Supreme Court um, this term where administration officials were found to have improperly influenced social media platforms. We are struggling so, with all this. And add to that Jay, the question of preferred speech versus speech that's out of bounds. Right. So, Jay, though, but this is the part that, and this is why, and I raised this issue with you last time we talked, and it's the thing that I can't understand. The last time we talked on the broadcast, you came on and we talked about anti-Semitism on uh, university campuses those that were talking about genocide to the Jews, other kinds of hate speech, other kinds of speech that was even, I would dare, I would say, considered unattractive speech. And I think that you, uh, as, uh, as your uh, colleague and, and probably boss Mark Rowan would say, it's a very problematic, very problematic speech, specifically at a time like, uh, like now, uh, where uh, Israel was attacked by Hamas. And you spoke out very vehemently, very vehemently, against that kind of speech on university campuses. Now, here we are today, and we're talking about free speech and open speech and what should that look like. And that, that is, you, in a way, the conversation we had and the conversation we're having now is, is a microcosm of the conundrum or the issues that this country is facing. Yep, yep, Andrew, let's look at it like a playing field, okay? Let's look at it like a playing field. There is speech that is clearly out of bounds. You don't go there. Anti-Semitism, hate, the embracing of terrorism. We can all agree that that is out of bounds. And we should vehemently say that it is out of bounds. Because only when that speech that makes people feel unsafe, that makes people feel uncomfortable, only when that speech is out of bounds does the marketplace for ideas on the very wide playing field work like it should. And this is where college campuses and other organizations have fallen down. They've muddied the waters between what's clearly out of bounds and what's on the playing field. It is, it is shameful that we talked about this before. It is shameful that people who have a different political view on questions that don't make anybody uncomfortable, don't, are societal questions about climate change and the like, it's shameful that they can't appear on college campuses. But it's also shameful that college campuses would allow people to pursue hate, to support Hamas. That, I think that the American public, to a person, would agree that that's the way our First Amendment and marketplace for ideas is set up, and we've lost that. Our college campuses but need it, to get back to that. But it seems to me that one of the things you're saying is that you're criticizing the advertisers, talking about a free market, if you will. Uh, you're criticizing the advertisers that are pulling their money uh, from X over uh, some of the, the content that's on that platform. In a way, you could argue that, and what, you know, on one side, you could say that's a free market. On the other side, you could say that's cancel culture. You know, you're going to have Elon Musk, who's, who, who, who talks openly about free, free market or, and free expression on one end, and yet he's going to be suing Media Matters today. Uh, if, in fact, he goes through with it. So not not, you know, not at all, Andrew. I'm not, I, I'm not I'm not I, I am not saying they can't pull their advertising dollars. If if the speech is truly out of bounds, of course they can. Even if they don't like the speech, it's a free market. They can you can do whatever you want. The media matters thing is actually quite remarkable because this goes to what I was talking about, about the changing of our marketplace for ideas. I mean, here here you have a question about whether someone is manipulating what is seen in order to say that someone else is doing something wrong. It's like, you know, in, in an old school thing, putting a briefcase of cash in somebody's car, taking a picture and saying, hey, maybe they're on the take. You know, this is, this right. is pretty, so, Jay, this is pretty serious, if true. 
Jay, I've been thinking about this one all weekend. Obviously, we've been reading about this news, and there's no question that obviously they're you know they're setting up, but they're curating their their timeline to have a certain number of or certain types of posts, and then they're pressing reload, reload, reload to see what kinds of ads come against it, so that they are hoping they can screenshot them and and say that 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 they're up against anti-Semitic posts and things. It is true that that happened if they once they pressed reload 13 times per thing or whatever it was. And the question is, is that wrong? Um, it's, it may not be realistic for most people, given the billions of, of ads or, or and, and other posts and content that served. But if you were trying to find out how, you know, how these posts were to come up, that may be one way to do it. I don't know. I, I, well, look, I, when, 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 we ask of... what's, when we ask what's right and wrong and what's legal and illegal, one of the things we start with is intent. What were they trying to accomplish with all those refresh hits? I don't know, but clearly there are indicia that they were trying to, to accomplish a very big negative on how Twitter operated and its promotion of what we all know is and what we all feel is speech that is out of bounds and harmful. Where, where do you think, you know, you, we talked about the idea of uncomfort. Uncomfort's an interesting word because there's safety. There's like phys there's true demonstrable physical safety. And I think we could all agree what that looks like, I think, but maybe we can't. And then there's this idea of uncomfort. How do you, uh, wh where's the line for you well, on well, that? Well, look, let's go, let's go back to college campuses because that's the place where they've really lost their way. College campuses are a place where you are supposed to be comfortable to, de to debate and discuss your views, comfortable and feel, feel safe, what colleges are supposed to do is facilitate that type of environment. So clearly something that is hate speech or makes people feel physically unsafe is out of bounds. But colleges are also supposed to curate environments where we can have a legitimate debate about um, taxes, about so societal issues, about climate change. Um, about which political party has the better argument. That, that is the kind of environment that colleges are supposed to create. What's, what's miraculous is they're allowing an environment where people feel totally unsafe. And in these issues that are what I would say is core to our democracy, they, people who feel uncomfortable are allowed to push those ideas away. That makes no sense. Colleges need to get a North Star back on this.